All righty, we'll get started in just a minute. I have put the um, the meeting link into chat. Hopefully it's there for people to join late. If you could please um, pop down who you are in the attendees just there, which I haven't done. Yeah. And we are three minutes past the hour. Um, so we might as well get started. Welcome everybody to um, the Qbert community meeting. It is the 23rd of August, 2023. Um, hope you're all having a nice morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you are. Um, now's the time that we take the opportunity to welcome any new members or people that have attended this meeting before but haven't introduced themselves. Um, if you'd like to take that opportunity now, then the floor is open to you. Alrighty then, we shall continue on. Um, if you decide to change your mind, then we're, we'll still be here. So let's have a quick look at the 1.1 schedule. And I'll also load this one. Hopefully my audio is better this week. So where are we? 23rd of August. We must have uh, prepared our alpha cut. And I see Daniel Hiller on the line. Um, has, has, that, has that happened? Is the schedule correct? Actually, sorry, I, I can't. At the moment, I have problems with my Zoom instance. I think I guess I need to rejoin. I, I'll, uh, could you circle back to, to later on probably so uh, I can answer the question? I'll try to rejoin it. No worries. Good luck. Okay, thank you. Sorry for that. Quite all right. Uh, so we'll return to the schedule in just one moment. Let's have a quick look at what the um, what our events are. These are all still open, but they will be closing soon. Uh, we've got uh, Kubernetes Community Days in Sri Lanka, Texas, and Denmark. Uh, the CFPs are still open. We also have Open Source Summit in Japan. And down here, um, we have two um, two talks that are going to be at KubeCon China um, that are presented by Howard. So thank you very much, Howard. That is the events. Um, I just wanted to highlight, uh, this isn't really a talking point unless we wanted to make it one. Uh, the SIGS, SIGS What's Next meeting is having their meeting um, again tomorrow. This will be their fourth meeting. It is at 12 o'clock UTC. I've got a link to the meeting notes here. And we just rec we recorded the last one, um, and I learned that not everyone was able to view the recording that went out. So I've put it up on a YouTube uh, on our YouTube channel. So the recording link is in that in the meeting notes there. I, as far as I know, and anyone can correct me if I'm wrong, um, but that's the only one that we that has been recorded. Um, if we do other recordings, then uh, ping me the links, and I'll put them on the YouTube channel. Uh, which segues nicely into, uh, yeah, I had to create a new YouTube playlist um, to catch these. And so we now have a home for ad hoc, temporary, um, one-off or recurring meetings such as this so that um, we don't have to worry about any permissions. We can just put them up there and then we have a record of them. Um, so, yeah, if if uh, any meetings in the future that we do have that should be recorded, um, we can you can ping the link and I'll pop them up into that playlist so they can be um, more, more widely distributed. So that is it from that. I see that Daniel Hiller has rejoined. So maybe we can jump over to the schedule. Yeah, um, now I can see it already. That's, that's great. Um, so um, the thing is that uh, if I remember correctly, that we still have some problems with one Tests on the C compute lane that is regarded to uh, SE Linux, if I remember correctly. Um, and so we couldn't yet make the 128 lanes um, required, which we would want to have for before the uh, uh, process is 
being finalized somehow. So um, I don't see Lubo online, so I don't know if you can keep me honest on that. But yeah, so so that's that's what I know for now. Um, so yeah, everything is from my point of view, everything is on track besides the uh, latest uh, 128 support, if I understand correctly. All right, thanks, thanks for that update. Um, the, does is this likely going to have an impact on the subsequent schedule, or is this just a blip? Oh, one second. I just noticed that the failures have been gone. So I think we are green and on sick compute for some days now. So I think we can start on making them always run. Today, I would prepare a PR on that. And if that all is, then all is going well, then we can uh, make them require pretty soon, which is which is great. So um, so for now, um, I don't think that we have a big schedule problem for now. I would just try to create the PR right away. Um, since since I see that the uh, alpha zero uh, should have been yesterday. Um, and I think that we at least should have uh, the 128 provider support there. So um, actually, I didn't see any alpha um, email, so I guess it's not yet branched. But yeah, I would need to check. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, moving on, we have some things turning up the open floor, and I believe these all belong to Howard. Howard, if you'd like to speak to these. Yes, hi everyone. Uh, this is a conformance test on ARM64. So we enable it, uh, those tests on ARM64 in order to get the official announcement that supports on ARM64 uh, from QBVert community. Um, just as Andrew said, we will have two presentations in KubeCon Shanghai uh, in September. So I really want to get the official announcement before the presentation. And as far as I know, um, uh, they, the two presentation is the first time that we, um, uh, we, we, how do you say, we talk about the QBvert in open source community in China. So it's really a good chance to light more Chinese user to know about QBvert. Uh, yes. Uh, and uh, hopefully and any maintainer can review those PR to make the conformance test works on ARM64. And I have verified that them on ARM64 platform. The test uh, works well. Yeah. And awesome. we, yeah, uh, would you, uh, can you open the issue 10304? The issue, not the PR. This issue. Uh yes. Uh, we uh, we get two uh issues when trying to enable conformance tests on M sixty four. Uh, the first one is uh C group programs. Uh, and uh, I found uh, the test uh works uh not well on the bootstrap image which use Podman. Uh, rather than Docker, and uh, when I migrate to the uh, po uh Bootstrap uh, legacy, which is using Docker rather than Podman, those tests works well. Uh, so I uh create two PR to uh build uh Bootstrap legacy for ARM sixty four. Uh, yeah, as you can see in these comments. 
And uh, another issue is that some uh, network testing are using uh, Arfen Turing uh, virtual machine to do the test. However, Arfen uh, the Arfen virtual machine is not cannot build on ARM. The reason is that the build tool uh, not works on ARM. Uh, this issue cannot can uh, uh, I cannot fix this issue um, in a short period. Uh, so uh, the conformance test is partially enabled on ARM sixty four. As you can see in the last comments, uh, we have passed eight conformance tests, and uh, there are twenty uh, tests in the conformance, uh, in total. So we skipped twelve conformance tests, and all those tests are use Arfin virtual machine to do the test. Yeah, uh, and this is the status of conformance test on ARM sixty four. Yeah, that's all. Wonderful. Um, does anyone have any uh, comments or questions uh, for Howard about any of the issues raised or PRs? All righty. Um, in which case, I might remove this, seeing as how you've captured it up above. Daniel, I see that you're adding something. Um, so I might just jump ahead to the pull request to give you time to complete what you're writing. No, it's fine. I was just wanting to discuss this on a quick matter. I was just sneaking in this one uh, since I <laughs> wanted to get feedback because I think I think we should discuss it in this round because most of the people would should be familiar with how we should construct that, right? So I guess at least I would I would want to take a more direct approach so that 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 we that we know what to build so that people uh, well so what people need actually, right? So um, just to, just as a quick uh, quick um, heads up for that, uh, Andrew and I were discussing from a from a related issue that we should somehow build a Kubernetes support matrix per version of Kubert, and so I was proposing something like what Andrew shows here in in the upper part, and uh, we discussed back and forth about how we would want to somehow um, uh, somehow view this. And then I came up with this rather big matrix of thousands of versions of which most of those are out of support already. And so what would be the best thing to display? Would we just uh, put our focus on all the latest versions that are not yet end of life? Or would we want to include the latest EOL version in this example, for example, this is the uh, 124 Kubernetes, um, or how should we, what would be the best thing uh, that we could, that could help our uh, users most? That, that is my question that I want to, want to ask here. Hi, Daniel. Hey, Howard. Yeah. Uh, from my point of view, it would be good to keep the old version uh, rather than the uh, only keep the latest one because mm. uh, uh, I get some feedback from the some user uh, in China or in the community. They are using old version of Qubivert rather than the latest one. Hmm. Can, uh, can you tell me which version that is? Do you know? Or do you remember? Uh, uh, I will send you. Let me check because it's uh, in the 
some issue page. I need to okay. have some time to check out. Okay. Sure. So, so if you could chime in on on the issue that you're seeing, so it's also added to the to the uh, community document. That would be great. Um. Yeah. And thanks for your feedback. That is handy. Um. Because um, if how it had been to it, I was going to say that when we talked about this in regards to like what we support in the documentation, the general idea was that um, yeah, we we should stick to what we what we do support. It is good to have um, what's ah uh, what's the word brain fat um the the slightly delayed um. Uh, versions when when gosh uh, applicable but in terms of a support matrix um, I think it's even more important that we more or less just declare what is being supported because this comes down to the kinds of things that get raised by um, the rest of the community that is then on the shoulders of the development community to help those people and so if we have a support matrix that has you know um, 0.56 supported by version 1.23. Well, I suspect um, the answer to that would be to upgrade rather than continue to support that. Um, I'd love to hear the thoughts of dissent on that. I think you're true. And when we are looking at somehow, um, uh, what we want to support as a community somehow. That's absolutely true. But you could look at it from another angle, like um, asking uh, for a support matrix that tells people uh, which Kubernetes versions are supported by which Kubert version. And actually, this, letter, this big uh, support matrix does exactly that. So... Uh, I forgot to to um, add some context on the on the braces that I put around the question uh, around the check marks. This actually the braces actually tell you which uh, Kubernetes versions are out of support. Um, so it should be probably obvious that, for example, like 058 is not supported by the community anymore. But still, it would support 124, 123, and 122, so to speak. So I can to completely understand that this is a lot to, to so this, this matrix is pretty complex because it has so many values. Um, so maybe we should probably clarify that this matrix, for example, is just a Kubernetes supported versions for Kubert and our support matrix would be, I think the uh, top four rows, for example, from that matrix and only the top four columns, something like that. What you proposed in an earlier post on that. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I'm fine with that. Helping people you know, who, who are on, say, 5.6 and want to run 1.23. Yeah, I just want to make it yet yeah, highlight, underline, uh, very clear that um, the in parentheses is uh, strictly for academic reasons. Um, yeah. <laughs> and that the the non parentheses versions are, are what the community currently supports. Um, which whereas I I would have thought point five eight, we should support that because it's our third most recent um, version, right? Um, the thing is that um, O fifty eight only supports the Kubernetes versions one twenty four, one twenty three, and one twenty two officially at least. Or let, let me put it differently. What I'm looking at when creating this, this matrix is I'm looking actually at the pre-submits file of the 58 version and looking at which jobs are actually um, always run and required. So actually, this is how it is currently in the, uh, in the actual code versus how we think it should be probably. Does that make it clear or did I not explain it well enough? I, I think that's clear. Um, and it's it's kind of useful to, um, I, I suspect this will also become a lot easier once we get 1.1 out and then all of our Kubert versions will be the month, the three monthly cadence matching Kubernetes. Whereas before that, mm -hmm. I think it gets a bit complicated. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so too. 
This might be because we have stumbled a little bit probably um, when introducing providers and didn't make it somehow or something that, that could be the case. So, but yeah, again, actually this, this tells us which versions are actually, which Kubernetes versions actually Qubit is tested against. So um, that's how it looks from the CI state. Yeah, super valuable. Um, does anyone else on the call have any uh, thoughts, opinions, or questions that would like to chime in? All righty then. Um, well, thank you, Daniel, for first for working on this, but also for raising this. I think it's super valuable. And I, I totally agree that having the, um, like not just automating it, but having against what is actually tested against is far more valuable than um, I think what I had in mind. So that's wonderful. Moving along, we have one pull request that I've noticed. Well, two, because we've got the one, which is actually four from Howard. Um, so I guess before we go along, if people could please uh, take a look at them um, in your own time. And Howard, um, please feel free to add them to our agenda next week or to um, ping me on Slack and I'll add whatever hasn't been looked at and we'll try and get more eyes on them uh, in the four weeks that we have left before KubeCon China. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so this one, uh, using a sidecar shim base image for those sidecars and move them under command sidecars. So this was created uh, yesterday. So relatively fresh. Um, don't have anyone looking into it at the moment. Uh, is anyone able to provide a review for Victor on this one? Hi, uh, I will try. Okay. Uh, see how my bandwidth, but yeah, you can CC on on that. Awesome. And is that, yeah, uh, that's <laughs> ENP. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. Good to see. You. Thank you very much, Igor. Sure. All righty. That is that one taken care of. Um, on the mailing list, the only thing that we had um, that hasn't been looked at is, and I, I, I have seen that this um, has had a lot of comments on it. I just wanted to raise it as a, just a general, we have a new design proposal. This is for migrating VMs with local storage. I linked to the, um, there's two things. Jay Canercan, I think you've, uh, there we go. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so there's um, two links in the email. So I've, I've linked the email. They're both in there. Uh, this highly relates to... Um, to SIG compute and SIG storage. There are some comments there. If you haven't seen this, then now is your chance to um, provide comment to Liche for that design proposal. And as far as the bug probe is, is concerned, um, I couldn't see anything. Everything looked wonderful. Everything's either work in progress, has comments, or um, those beautiful looks good to me and approved green tags. So thank you everyone for working on them. Uh, that brings us to the end of what we have on the agenda here. Does anyone have anything that they would like to slide in at the last minute or just popped into the head right now? Uh, hey, this is Harvard. Um, topic for a future meeting. 
Um, I'm particularly interested in some sort of a getting started, you know, step by step by step method to uh, take us from point A to point B. Um, and my objective is to uh, run KubeVert uh, with VMs. Uh, and I'm happy to raise my hand to help on that if that's a gap. So just food for thought. Do we have us getting started? We have a couple of things. Um, probably, I mean, they're, they're relatively high level introductions. Um, they are on Qubit IO. Yeah, and I don't want to um, take the meeting sideways. Uh, if you feel like just uh, posting them, or, or I can just look at this. This is fine. <laughs> you you answered the question. I'll start here, and I'll bother you some more later after I've done some homework. Absolutely. Yeah. So we've got. Um, if you're just interested in, in a, yeah, like, I've I've done the Killer Coda one. Sure. Oh yeah, excellent. Um, these labs might be a little out of date. I think we had an issue about someone running through them and yeah. seeing how out of date they are. That, that was what I was thinking in Daniel's section is there's this evolution of versions and so forth and, and you know, making sure that the community, the users have a good experience uh, and, and the, the content matches the versions, et cetera, is, is worth doing. Awesome. Um, yeah, if if... Things here, if yeah, if you definitely see holes, by all means, um, yeah, ping me just, on the Slack channel. You got it. Thank you. That answers it. Thank you. Um, also, next week, um, I did forget to promote this. Almost, I'm, I'm doing it now. Uh, we're going to have uh, Nitish, who's been our uh, Google Summer of Code mentee. Um, and he's going to come in next week and give a presentation on the work he's been doing on the generate second profiles, which um, now has its own repo. Um, and just in the, the Google Summer of Code um, process in general. Uh, so that's going to be next week. Um, hopefully everyone can make it and will enjoy it. Um, that's all for today's meeting. Thank you everyone for attending. Uh, thank you everyone for, for bringing things in, for taking care of uh, bugs, PRs and whatnot. I uh, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, weekend, and we'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.